44-year-old Grady Gallup wearily walked up the cracked concrete steps of his home. Another week of hell at a job he hated was finally over. It was a pleasant late spring Friday evening in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Alamogordo is a small town with a population of about 10,000 people. Grady was a military contractor at nearby Holloman Air Force Base. Alamogordo's claim to fame is that it was ground zero for the end of the world. Now only Grady and his wife, Magdalena, were there. All three children grew up and left their small town as quickly as they could. As soon as he crossed the threshold of his house, an atomic bomb exploded in his head, shaking him to the core. Oh my God, yes. Take me deeper. I need to feel it. Oh shit, that's it. I'm done. She practically growled. Whatever it was, he had never heard Maggie scream like that before. Grady looked at his watch, an old military habit. Hell, it was 6.30. He didn't even get home early and she was having sex with someone upstairs. He froze in place. How the hell am I supposed to behave? For some reason, shouting, Honey, I'm home, seems out of place. Maybe she's playing with a giant vibrator. That's it. That's what I have to see. Grady was shocked by the sight of his lover. He was like a child, probably younger than their eldest, in a sweaty, naked embrace after intercourse on their bed with his wife. Maggie looked at her watch. Oh, shit. Darling, you need to get out of here right now. I lost track of time and hubby will be home any minute. Now go. It's too late. I'm already home. Grady was unfazed. Two things happened immediately. Maggie fainted, and her lover began to cry. What the fuck? You're man enough to have sex with someone else's wife in the family bed, and when you get caught, you cry? Today's young generation is kind of a waste of time. Just leave, son. Now. Wait, how old are you anyway? Nineteen, sir. Grady just shook his head and sighed. In any case... Thank God, at least this is the case. E.D. He pointed to the door. The guy grabbed his clothes and disappeared in the blink of an eye. Grady went downstairs, grabbed a beer, and sipped it slowly at the kitchen table, waiting for his wife to come to her senses. Ten minutes later, his wife, wearing only a robe, sat down next to him. She gently extended her hand. Grady, honey, I'm sorry you saw that but you don't regret fucking him? Why, Maggie? Listen, honey, it doesn't mean anything, baby. All he has is a cigar a few inches longer than yours, and he can smoke it for hours. It's just a purely physical thing, and we only do it once a week. He gets me where you can't. You understand, right? I love you to death, honey. Our family is the most important thing to me forever. If you could grow your cigar longer, I wouldn't need it at all. You understand? Grady stared at Maggie blankly. It made her nervous. Say something, baby. Actually, Maggie, I really understand. I'm going to sleep in Anthony's old room. Good night. And Grady went upstairs without looking at Maggie. Maggie left early Saturday morning for her usual golf date with the ladies, but before leaving, she thoroughly cleaned the master bedroom. She didn't want to rub it in Grady's face. Returning home, she put her clubs in the hallway closet and was about to call Grady when she heard strange noises coming from upstairs. Oh yeah, Grady baby, take me harder. Oh my God, this feels so good. When Maggie looked into their bedroom, her husband was there, having sex with a petite blonde who was barely 20 years old. What the fuck, Grady? Without stopping, Grady looked up. Oh, hi, honey. Look, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, if you could make your vagina smaller... I wouldn't need it at all. You understand me, right? Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.